The Chicago Bears will remember the 1975 season as a vital step in their restructuring. It was a difficult year, but a year of progress. It was a down payment on the future. A year to find dares to build on. Going into the 1975 season, a training camp spirit developed in which every position was open to competition. That spirit resulted in a young, combative team. One that drew encouragement from its fans and leadership from its coach, Jack Pardee. Pardee's first year was spent in rebuilding, and more importantly, in setting a course for the future. With 34 players gone from the previous year's roster, Party took a team that included 17 rookies through a punishing NFL schedule. But while the young Bears may have lacked experience, they never lacked faith in their coach or in themselves. In 1975, the Chicago defense improved in all categories of play. As a head coach who played professionally for 15 years and won all pro defensive honors while doing so, Jack Party was well prepared to revitalize the Bears' defense. Number 55 linebacker Doug Buffon tells why. Of course, Jack and I have a lot in common. Jack played for 13, 14 years as a linebacker and uh, called most of his defenses. Through Jack's experience, when I go into the game, I'm well prepared as far as uh, knowing when to call certain defenses man-to-man -man defense and zone defenses and he can mix them up real well and this is what basically gives to, gives to us and gives me the idea the philosophy that we want to develop and of course you know we had one year last year and you can't do it in one year but give me two three years and i'll have it down like he had it down when he played it for the rams and for washington i can say about jackson a great defensive mind and i hope i can just develop it in as many years i have where i can put it to use out in the field you know in 10 years since i've been with the bears uh Myself and the Bear fans been crying for a winner. And every year we'd go into the season, everybody would say, this is the year, this is the year the Bears are going to do it. And in 10 years, that hasn't happened, obviously. I know there's going to be some additions to our defense coming up in the next two or three years. I think that uh, we need some additions. But what our philosophy is, is to hold a team, is not to make mistakes and put a veteran team together. I'm the veteran. For 10 years, I'm the veteran ball player. And a lot of these guys are young. They're only second, third, fourth year men. If he can, once he puts his nucleus together, and after they play together for three years, they kind of have a great defense. Teaming with Buffon in his linebacking chores is number 50, Wayman Bryant. Experienced at playing the middle as well, Bryant was moved outside in 1975 where his speed and agility could be better utilized. Returning to back up the middle for Chicago will be Don Reeves, number 57. Reeves missed most of the 75 season with a foot injury, but used his rehabilitation time to build himself up to 245 pounds of solid middle linebacking material. Just as men like Don Reeves spend their time building strength during the offseason, defensive backs work on their endurance. Cornerback Alan Ellis assesses the season past, his hopes for the future, and the demanding nature of his position. I was really pleased with the way that we came along as hitters. I thought we hit as well as any secondary in the league. But uh, as far as um, pass defense is concerned, I think we have uh, a lot more things to learn as a team, not as individuals, but as a team, I think we can gel a little more together. We had a lot of new people come in, first of all. Then, as I said, we had new coaching staffs, new philosophy, and new defense all together. I think as a whole that we're going to be a great team defensively. If we can uh, keep the personnel playing together, to me, that's one of the keys of a defensive unit. You've got to be able to know what your teammate is going to do under certain situations. When I'm out there on the field, I uh, try to keep people from catching the ball on me, period. A lot of times it's positioning. When he's positioned where he can catch the ball, the only thing that I can do is try to hit him or strip him or make him pay the price for coming into my areas. And, you know, it's about a lot of cocky receivers around. They like to talk to you a lot, you know. And it gets on your nerves. So I try to put as much love on them as I can so they'll know that I'm there. And the thing to me is to gain the respect of the people in the league, and that's what I try to do. The veteran of the secondary is number 45, strong safety Craig Clemens. In his fifth NFL season, Clemens is a big play athlete and a savage tackler.
While Ellison Clemens of the veterans in the secondary, number 24, Virgil Livers, spent his rookie season at cornerback, where he showed he can play despite his 5-foot, 8-inch height. But Livers is not only a defensive back. His explosive speed and daring propelled him to new club records for punt returns in 1975. Another man who enjoyed an impressive rookie season in 75 was safety Doug Plank, number 46. While Plank graded out well as a pass defender, he gained instant recognition for his shattering tackles. Chicago sprung four as the bottom line of the defense, and it is here that Jack Party has created the foundation for continued growth. The defensive end is number 73, Mike Hartenstein. As a rookie, he showed excellent play recognition. Hartenstein's ability to master opponents' blocking efforts earned him a place on the all-rookie team in 1975. Number 73 adds intensity in the coming season. He should move on toward NFL stardom. Another up-and-coming member of the front four is number 71, tackle Roger Stilwell, who joined Hartenstein on the NFL All-Rookie Team. At six foot five and 260 pounds, Stillwell has the raw strength to simply overpower an opponent. In Stillwell and Hartenstein, the Bears have a pair of superior newcomers whose youth forecast brighter days for the Chicago front four. Number 72, Gary Ribnack, is another young defender who shows the capacity to develop into a starting role. In number 84, Richard Harris, the Bears have a young veteran who uses speed and experience to overcome his opponent. In 1975, the 6'5", 260-pounder played both at end and tackle. Defensive tackle Jim Osborne, number 68, makes things happen. Osborne's style is reckless and aggressive, and most of the time that aggressiveness acts to disrupt the flow of an opponent's play. Where his fierce style is most effective, however, is against the pass. And in 1976, when Osborne begins his fifth year as a bear, he'll be counted on for more big plays. The man that all bear defenders will try to emulate in 1976 is Wally Chambers. Number 60 is a man who not only knows all the angles of pursuit, but has the desire and hustle to bring off a big play. Exceptionally quick off the snap of the ball, Chambers used his great pass rush to net 14 quarterback sacks in 1975. Wally Chambers can dominate a ball game with his far-reaching play, and that's why he'll be leading the defense into the 76 season as a three-time All-Pro. Jack Party's rebuilding of the defense certainly is not complete, 
the decides of the 75D fans can only promise improvement for the future. As a rookie in 1975, center Dan Piper was elected tri-captain of the Bears. His dedication to the rebuilding of an injured knee gives an insight into the spirit and purpose of the young Bears offense. As far as coming back from an injury, you've got a lot of hard work getting your leg back in shape, getting the muscle tone back, and uh, getting your complete strength back where you have full confidence in it, where uh, you're not out on the field wondering what's going to happen if you make this move or make that move. Everything's got to come back to be automatic, just like it was before the injury. One of the main concerns is to uh, get your body in shape and get your strength up where uh, you can be the best. I think that's everybody's goal. It should be that a uh, man should have enough pride in himself that he wants to be the very best in his position in the league. I feel that someday in the near future that uh, we're going to be considered one of the great offensive lines in the, the NFL. If we just need a couple more years of experience, we'll be there. And you get pride and satisfaction out of knowing that, that uh, you helped rebuild the team and get to the top. From the sweat and strain of the weight room, Dan Piper will return to a center position in 76 with greater strength to pry open opposing defensive lines. At right offensive tackle, number 75, Jeff Seavey, will return to improve on the form that earned him all rookie honors in 1975. Size and quickness enable him to block for crucial yardage. Also named to the all-rookie team in 1975 was guard Noah Jackson. Number 65 has star potential. A promising pass blocker, he also is highly regarded for his bulldozing efforts as a pulling guard. A newcomer to the revamped offensive line in 1975 was number 63, guard Mark Nordquist. Acquired from the Eagles, the nine-year pro excels at pass protection and brings a veteran's poise to the youth-accented lineup. The most consistent of all the Bear linemen in 75 was number 79, Lionel Antoine, an offensive tackle who'll be entering his fifth season in 1976. Antoine's size and power neutralizes the defensive pass rush. The Bears expect Lionel to continue his giant stride to 1976. The young Chicago line also numbers Dan Neal, Bob Asher, Bob Newton, and Reedy Sorry, and is striving toward improvement in 76 because the Bears have the running backs to make good use of their blocks. At the start of the 75 season, number 35, Roland Harper, was an obscure 17th round draft choice. But his blocking and running ability quickly earned him a starting role. And he will be a prominent figure in backfield plans for 1976. Backing up starters Roland Harper and Walter Payton is number 20, Mike Adamley, a multi-talented performer who can pass, block for a teammate, and run the ball with a special knack for squeezing out yardage. With 
one year of experience behind them, the new-look Bear backfield and line will enter the 1976 season with the aim of turning youthful exuberance into across-the-board improvement. Gary Huff is the Bears' veteran quarterback, ready to direct the offensive attack. Huff is entering his fourth season of NFL play and brings to the job a major league passing arm. Competing with Huff for the starting position will be a man short on experience, but long on confidence, quarterback Bob Abilini. In 1975, the Bears scored 14 of their 22 touchdowns after the rookie Abilini assumed a quarterbacking role. Number seven put points on the Chicago scoreboard in 75. And in 76, he'll be out to take up where he left off. Receiving end of the offense, the Bears have number 88, Greg Latta, who caught three touchdown passes in the final game of the season. Latta plays behind number 86, Bob Parsons, at tight end. Parsons also doubles as the Bears' punter. In an age of specialization, Parsons' multiple skills are a welcome boost to the Bear attack. The offense's ace in the hole is place kicker Bob Thomas, number 16. Thomas kicked a club record 55-yard field goal in 1975 and is pursuing a weight program during the offseason to strengthen his leg for 76. At the wide receiver position for Chicago in the coming season will be a number of tested veterans. Number 27, Bob Grimm, makes the plays that have earned him league-wide respect for 10 seasons. Ron Shanklin came in trade to Chicago in 75 after starring at Pittsburgh, making a comeback from knee surgery. Number 25 is looking to renew his touchdown talents with the Bears. In 76, the Bears figure Grimm and Shanklin will add to the value of number 80, Bull Rather, a man who doubled his offensive production in 75 and averaged 17 yards per catch. With the year of consolidation behind them, the young Bears are eagerly awaiting the coming season. The only promise for the new year is progress. But with Jim Finks and Jack Pardee at the helm, Bears fans know their team is on course to contention. Leading the defensive contribution to team's success will be the man many consider the finest tackle in the game. With a range that spans the width of the football field, number 60, Wally Chambers, is the cornerstone to defensive rebuilding. Wally Chambers' example of pride and effort must stand as a goal for every Bear defender to reach for. It is with that goal in mind that the defensive unit awaits this 76 season.
Before the Bears' first game lost to Baltimore at Soldier Field, the sewers backed up in Chicago's dressing room. Coach Jack Pardee said, quote, we dressed in six inches of sewage, and then we went out and stuck up the field. Week two brought Roman Gabriel and the Eagles, and instead of garbage, the Bears resembled gutter rats as they tore into Gabe's pass pocket to sack him on three occasions. So distraught was Roman that once he lined up under guard John Nyland. With such confusion, Gabriel played right into the hands of linebacker Jimmy Gunn, number 30. This season, the Bears' attack has been bolstered by number one draft pick Walter Payton, whose style reminds many of the great Gale Sayers. Against the Eagles, Pardee inserted second-year quarterback Gary Huff, who, unlike scrambling Bobby Douglas, feels right at home in the pass pocket. Bo Rather's pretty reception of a 50-yard bomb set up the Bears' only touchdown. Number 27, Bob Grimm, cleared out coverage on Philadelphia's right side. Then Huff rolled out until he spotted a completely unattended Sid Edwards in the vacated right side of the Eagles' end zone. The Bears led 12 to six in the last quarter until Gabe exploited a mismatch between five foot eight inch rookie Virgil Livers, number 24, and six foot eight inch Harold Carmichael. Carmichael's touchdown gave Philadelphia a 13 to 12 lead with a little over two minutes remaining. Chicago nickeled and dimed their way down Soldier Field with Walter Payton turning short passes into key first downs. With but 11 seconds remaining, the Bears entrusted their fate to place kicker Bob Thomas. And the rookie from Notre Dame booted the Bears into a 15-13 come from behind victory. Sometimes the job of winning consistently is too big for a team to handle, especially if that team is young and learning to play together. Such is the case with Green Bay, whose fresh start with Bart has been shaky. But despite a 27-14 loss to the Bears last week, the Packers do have their gems, like number 84, Steve Odom, a young wide receiver who also leads the NFC in kickoff returns. Men like Odom are called hope for the future. But for right now, the Packers' hopes sometimes seem hopeless. This 76-yard interception return by number 45, Craig Clemens, helped boost the Bears out of the NFC Central cellar. This year, the Packers and Bears will have to take their joy from these flashes of individual brilliance and an occasional lonesome victory. Meanwhile, in Milwaukee, quarterbacks had to deal not only with mistakes and tough defenses, but frostbitten fingers as well. Ranked last offensively, Chicago went with number seven, rookie Bob Avellini from Maryland. And at times, Avellini had the Bears looking as if they should be called the Polar Bears. Most of the time, however, in combinations came through with a touchdown. Five foot eight inch Willard Harrell to five foot eight inch Steve Odom for six. The Packers won 28 to seven and escaped the basement of the NFC Central, which is now occupied only by the Bears. The Bear was not about to kiss and tell and growl about his Chicago Bears. Neither was quarterback Bob Avellini, a chunky hunk of rookie meat whose staggered snap count was an invitation for the over-eager Detroit Lions to come to dinner. Mm -hmm. 
Avellini proved to be a beggar's banquet to the Lions, who evidently were trying to re-merchandise the old black and blue myths about the NFC Central Division. When Avellini's senses and headgear were restored, the rookie from Maryland attempted to pry apart the stunning gambling Detroit defense with long-range passing. This strategy produced two interceptions, but failed to alter Avellini's style. Sooner or later, he knew the adventurous Lions would be trapped with single coverage on speedy Bo Rather number 80. All year long, the Bears have tried to unleash the splendid talents of number one draft choice Walter Payton, whose Achilles heel is the crucial fumble. Once again, Payton's inopportune turnover seemed to bury the Bears, but Bob Avellini sought a second opinion. The result was a reprieve for Payton and six points for Chicago. Avellini's knack of swallowing the Lions' secondary in large gulps can be attributed to perfect protection and Bo Rather's elusive patterns. Down deep, straight ahead power football produced Peyton's second touchdown and a 19-7 lead for the Bears. It was only a matter of time before Lion quarterback Joe Reed found the soft parts in the Bears' flabby zone. Marlon Briscoe, a gypsy receiver, caught two touchdowns. The second covered 59 yards and returned the lead to Detroit 21-19. Briscoe turned up lame, and so did the Lions' defense. Their gambling style of play was reflected by linebacker Charlie Weaver, number 59, whose inside blitzes opened up the sidelines for valuable gains by Walter Payton. This Russian roulette style of play cost Detroit the game when Chicago caught them in a full blitz and rookie Roland Harper, number 35, scored the winning touchdown. Roland Harper was Chicago's final draft choice and his only entry in their press guide notes that at Louisiana Tech he was the blocking back for Charles Quick Six McDaniel the man he beat out for a spot on the Bears roster. Such stuff are what fairy tales and victories are made of. Bears 25, Lions 21. In Chicago, the track was slower, but the horses were just as fast. Number 80, Bo Rather, turned a flanker screen into a 50-yard burn for six points. Talent Rich. Subbing for a Terry Metcalf, Steve Jones, number 34, scored twice and helped St. Louis bury the Bears 34 to 20. In the New Orleans Superdome for the season's final game, they showed themselves as a young team headed in a positive direction. Defensively, the front four mauled the Saints with a ferocious rush, while the secondary came through with three interceptions and a touchdown of its own. Offensively, rookie running back Walter Payton showed his brilliance as he routed the Saints with his dazzling runs. Of the five offensive rookie starters that day, 
Another heavy contributor was number seven, quarterback Bob Avellini, who threw three touchdown passes to number 88, rookie tight end Greg Latta. At game's end, the Young Bears had exploded for 458 yards of total offense. A difficult year of transition had ended on a positive note, and Jack Pardee could reflect on his season of rebuilding. We found out in 1975 to come up with the winning combination, the winning team, that we had to end up turning over half the squad. We did this in looking for the players that have good work habits, that we think have the ability to win in the National Football League. You know, I think winning is part of a habit, of, a, of good habits that have to be established. With the young team, I think last year we kind of went out with not knowing if we could win or not, if we played our best. What we have to do in the, this year to improve is to go out knowing that we can win every game if we don't beat ourselves, if we don't eliminate ourselves. We have winning players in uh, Ron Shanklin, Walter Payton. These guys have demonstrated they can move the football. So it's, it's having that confidence in yourself as well as your teammate to go out and expect to win and not to lose. Symbolizing the spirit of the offense is number 34, Walter Payton, a gifted runner whose competitive nature is never dampened. Peyton left the college ranks as the leading scorer in NCAA history. And as a rookie for Chicago in 1975, showed he was eager to take on the record books of the NFL. Peyton led his team in rushing and scoring in 75 and showed his great running ability on kickoff returns when he captured the NFL return crowd. Now you've seen the type of men chosen to be bears to build on. Their individual skills all are aimed at one common goal and that is to bring the oldest franchise in professional football back to a position of power. The road ahead won't be easy, but these young bears to build on believe they are equal to the task.